All right, so this recording is going to show you how to um, clone uh, your GitHub repository for each of your labs or application exercises, how to bring that into our studio to create a new project, uh, and then how to commit and push changes uh, as you go. So you saw how to do this once, um, but I thought I would just record a video to make sure that uh, you can kind of refer back to something if you ever need to get a quick refresher or reminder on how to do this. All right, so what you're going to do is the first thing you're going to do is go to our uh, course page. Um, so our course GitHub page, and, and you can find the link to that um, on, uh, on our course website and, and also on Canvas. And so once you're here at the main page, you can click here under Find a Repository. Uh, this will be the fastest way to be able to find the ones that are created specifically for you. Um, so what happens is every time I create a lab or an application exercise, I create a template. And then I uh, create from that template, I make a private repository for each of you that only you have access to and I have access to, but none of the other students have access to. Um, so that's what all these private ones are for. I can see everybody's, but you should only be able to see yours. Um, and also you can see the some of the public repositories like the website and the discussion board that we had discussed before. So to find the repository specifically to you, you'll type in your GitHub username. So mine is Lucy McGowan, and there's only one right now because we've only done the first, but as the semester goes on, you'll see uh, further ones here. And so the first part of this file name is going to refer to the um, w whatever it is that you are uh, going to be cloning. So in this case, this is the first uh, lab, just the text setup lab that I'd set up. Um, if it was lab two, it would say lab-02 uh, and then the name of the lab and then it would have your GitHub username after that. Okay, so you'll search for your name here and then once you find the, the um, repository that you're interested in cloning, you'll click on it. And what this is going to show you is the starter files. So the way GitHub works is basically it's like a file repository uh, online, a way to host uh, code. And, and, and it's a nice uh, interface to be able to work with because a lot of people who work in tech and data science are very familiar with it. And it has some nice features that make it um, good for collaboration, among other things. So what I have done is I've created this um, this repository with some starter code to get you started on this lab. And each time you'll have a repository like this um, for the labs and application exercises that we do in class uh, that will have some of these starter files. And so just to kind of take a look at what's what's in here, we have this .gitignore file. This is a GitHub specific file. I can click on it so you can see what's in here. It lists file names that I want to um, not send to GitHub, so that I want GitHub to ignore. And so what that means is that if I have any files that, that, that are named these various things, like .rhistory, .rdata, uh, .rusdata, if I have any of those on my local machine, uh, they will not show up when I'm trying to push things to GitHub. So this is good because, you know, if you had something like a password or if you had, you know, something that you didn't want to be pushed to GitHub, uh, you could put it in, in this and, and it wouldn't send it. So that git ignore is going to always be there. The other things that we have here, um, I've got a readme, which is what this little file is here. It's just sort of a, a landing page for what you see when you look at the repository. And then you have a .rmd file or an R markdown file. This is going to be that starter file. And then you have a .rproj. This is like an R project file. And so if I click here on this .rmd file, you can see that this is uh, basically a shell um, of, a, of a R markdown. And by shell, I just mean it's basically like it gets you started with the different pieces, but there's things that you still need to fill out to finish your, uh, to finish your exercises for this lab. And so this is the file you're going to edit in order to uh, create your lab document. So what I'm going to do here and what you will do each time once you get to the uh, repository that you're interested in, you're going to click this green code button. And that's going to allow you to clone or copy this repository to your local computer. So to do that, you'll click on this little uh, two squares that's going to copy this link. And then I'm going to go to our studio. And so I'm going to click on my our studio session. 
And in our studio, I'm going to do File, New Project. And this is asking if it wants me to save my workspace. I don't ever save my workspace. And in fact, I can even set it such that it never will ask me. If under Preferences here, if you go uh, to this workspace, Restore our data in the workspace, I'm going to uncheck that so that it does not save the workspace. And the reason I'm doing that is because what this is asking about is if you want to save, like if you had loaded a data set, it would try to save that so the next time you open the project, that data set will still be loaded. And in general, this is the default in our studio uh, due to historical reasons, like it's always been the default and so it continues to be the default. But it's actually not really best practice from a reproducibility standpoint and it can be kind of confusing if you have things loaded when you first open a fresh session. So I like to uncheck that and click never. So I'm gonna say okay. Now back to what we were doing. I'm gonna click file and new project. And now I'm going to say version control. I would like to check out a project from a version control repository. And then I'm going to click Git. And then I'm going to copy that link that I had uh, copied from the, from the GitHub uh, interface right here. So what this is going to do is it's, this is the repository URL where it's going to grab the files. It's going to create a project directory or a folder with this name, and that's usually good practice to have that be the same name as the one that it is on GitHub. And then here it says, where do I want this to live? Create a project as a subdirectory of what? And so I encourage you to click Browse and put this in a very sensible place. So for example, you could put it under Courses, and under, uh, in this case, uh, the, this is this year's course, the STA 22s. Uh, uh, or 2022 spring STA 679. And so that's where this is going to live. So I encourage you to make sure you're sticking these folders in a, in a sensible place. And then I'm going to click Create Project. So now it's copying that and it's switching over to this new project. And so here I've got this nice project set up right here where it copied those files from GitHub into this folder. So if you'll notice over here, you can look in this file pane, you can see that this folder exists in the folder I have requested it to exist in, that 679 folder. And it's got the subdirectory here, lab00 tech setup Lucy McGowan, that's the name of the folder. And this is where the, all those files that we saw in GitHub exist now exactly as we saw them there. So I'm going to open this R Markdown file. For those of you that haven't worked with R Markdown before, um, R Markdown is basically, it's a way to be able to integrate text and code into a single document. And so uh, at the top here, this is called the YAML. This is going to be where you can put some details like the title, the author. You can also add a date in here. So I'm going to put today's date. Today is the 12th. Uh, and, and the type of output. And this is generally going to be an HTML document for most of what we're doing in this class, although you could set that to be a PDF document or a Word document. And then sometimes I'll have some code uh, chunks already loaded here. So I've already put in one that loads the tidyverse. Um, and sometimes these will just be blank and you can uh, kind of load all of, your, all of the different pieces you need yourself. And so as I, I called this a code chunk, what that means is basically, uh, as I mentioned, these R Markdown files are integration of text and code. And in order to di distinguish um, kind of where the text goes and where the code goes, you use these backticks, three backticks with a curly bracket and the letter R, lets R know that you'd like to type some R code. And then you can close a chunk with three more ticks. And so this space inside here is going to be where your R code goes. And then outside of it, here you can write different text to explain basically what's happening in that R code or to answer questions about the different exercises. One thing that's important with R Markdown files is that they, every time they're run, they run um, in a new R session and they run linearly, by which I mean it's going to open a fresh R session, so anything you've typed in the console doesn't matter. Uh, it only is going to basically run the code that you've put in here. And it runs it in order. So it's going to run this chunk first, and then it'll run this chunk. So for example, if I added a chunk up here that said uh, that used a function from the tidyverse, for example, if I tried to use this read CSV function before I had loaded the package, I'm going to get an error. So I'm going to just show you what that looks like. So here I get this error that says read CSV, could not find function read CSV. And that's because I tried to read that CSV in before I loaded the library. 
I need to make sure I'm doing those uh, kind of that I need to remember that a markdown our markdown document is always going to run in order of the chunks all right so I've made a couple changes to this file here I added a date um, and so I'm going to save it and I'm going to knit it which means I'm going to hit this button or I can hit command shift k on a mac or control shift k I believe on a pc and when I knit it, it creates this nice HTML file that kind of renders all those different pieces. So now that's knit, and you'll notice over here in my file pane, I have a new file here, lab00techsetup.html. And so now I want to send these files to GitHub. So to do that, I'm going to click on the Git pane up here. And I notice there are two things in this pane. There's one file that was modified. That's what this M means. Uh, and that's that RMD file. And then there's a new file here. It's untracked, uh, which is why it has this question mark, because that file does not currently exist on GitHub, but I'm going to send it there. So I can either check both of these boxes to stage them, and now it's gone from being uh, un, uh, untracked to added. Or I can just click this Commit button here, and once I'm in this new uh, GitHub pane, I can then check them. So what that's going to do is it's going to um, it's going to send these files to GitHub. So I can look and see what changes were made for this RMD file. I added a date. It looks like I deleted a line here and added a line here. Uh, so those were the changes that were made for that file. And for this file, it says the diff is extremely large and may cause RStudio to slow down or even hang. Are you sure you want to continue? HTML files. So. Um, HTML is basically a way to be able to, it's a language um, for being able to render kind of what uh, websites and things like that usually often use it. Um, and so this new file, even though it looked very elegant when I looked at it on my screen, it actually has a whole bunch of code that goes behind it, which is why uh, the, the diff is going to look really large. So in general, I don't really worry about looking at the diffs for my HTML files, um, but I do like to look at them for my RMD files to remind myself what has changed. And when I've done that, I write a little commit message. So for example, here I'm going to put like added date. And this just reminds me what, what I uh, did with this particular change. And then I click commit. And so what's happened here is now locally on my computer, I've told Git uh, that I've made a change and I've registered that change or I've committed that change. Nothing has happened with GitHub yet. So not, uh, the, the uh, repository on GitHub does not know about this change. I can, I can show you that by going back to this repository. Um, everything on here is exactly as it was before. I can even do a refresh and see that nothing has changed here. This is all as it was with all the initial commits as the only messages that have come up so far. In order to tell GitHub about this change, I need to actually push them. So that's what this green button is. So each time you're going to uh, you're going to add your files, you're going to commit them, and then you're going to push them in order to get them on GitHub. So now when I refresh, I'll see that there was a, there's a new commit. It happened one minute ago. And you can see my commit message, added date, and I have a new file here as well, this HTML file. So now if I click on this RMD file, it's got the date there uh, as well. So those changes were in incorporated. So I can go back to this RMD file. I can make another change. For example, I can answer my question for exercise one. And now I'm going to knit that. And so there's my rendered document. It's got that answer in there. Make sure that you always answer your questions with full sentences. That's uh, so that I uh, we can make sure that we're communicating our results effectively. And now I have two M's here because I have two modified files, the RMD file and the HTML file. And so again, I'm going to commit them. And I can see now, because it wasn't creating a brand new HTML file, it was just showing the one change. You can see that's the, the line that changed on the HTML file, and there's the line that changed on the RMD file. So now my commit message is going to be answered exercise one. Commit. Now, these are still, I have not pushed the changes yet. So if I go back to GitHub, those changes have not happened. If I look here, the last commit was still just added date. In order for that to get pushed to GitHub, I have to hit this green push button. Let's close that. All right, and now let's refresh again. 
and we see the new answered exercise one and the RMD file and the HTML file. And so now I can look at that and it's got that, that answer. So the big picture here for what we want to do every time we're kind of making a change to our RMD file is you want to knit, commit, and then push. So when I make a change, so let's say I'm going to answer my question for exercise two, I've answered it, I'm going to knit it, so that's going to create that, uh, render that HTML file. That also makes sure that the RMD file is saved. When you knit, it automatically saves the RMD file. And then I'm going to commit, so I'm going to uh, take these two and commit them. Update exercise two. I'm going to commit, and then I'm going to push. So you want to make sure you do all of those steps. Because in order for me to be able to grade it, if you've committed it but not pushed it, I won't be able to see. So you need to make sure that you push those changes uh, by, the, by the deadline of, of the assignment so that I can go ahead and grade them. All right, so that's how you are able to uh, clone a repository and push changes to GitHub.